Lancaster General Healthy Weight Management brings you understanding nutrition facts labels. Because let's face it, food labels can be tricky, so it's important to understand what it is that they're trying to tell you, just like the table of contents in a book. The nutrition facts label is broken into different sections, and today we will be discussing the features of those food labels, including the specific product serving size, servings per container, the nutrition information including the calories per serving, and all of the additional data below the calories on the food label. We'll first start with serving sizes. The serving size for this product is two-thirds of a cup. And you ask how many servings are in this package? That's right. There are eight servings in this package. One serving will give you 230 calories. We always need to look at the servings per container. Already mentioned were the calories in one serving. That is the bold calorie level on the nutrition facts label, 230. If you were to eat the entire package, knowing that there are eight servings in that package, eight two-third cups servings, with one two-third cup serving, you would get 230 calories. How many calories would you get if you ate the entire package? At that point, you would then multiply the eight times the 230, and you would get 1,840 calories. The next thing I want to speak about is the amount of fat. We're talking about fat in the different foods. As you can see, the fats are all broken down in the green section. There are three types of fats in foods, unsaturated, saturated, and trans fats. Unfortunately, the only two types of fats that are required to be listed on the food label are the saturated fats and the trans fats, and they are the unhealthy fats. The saturated fats are solids at room temperature, and the trans fats, also equally as unhealthy for you, are usually found in partially hydrogenated oils, which would then be indicated as such on the ingredient list of your nutrition facts label, which we will see later in this slideshow. The unsaturated fats are the healthy fats. They remain liquid at room temperature. The next topic we will talk about is sodium. It is important to make sure that we try to follow a low sodium diet with less than 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day. That's only equivalent to one teaspoon of salt. So for those of you that cook or bake, if you put one teaspoon of salt in that recipe, that would be equivalent to your daily limit. For all Americans, this is what is recommended at this point in time. So you can see how little bit of salt adds up to be our daily limits. So we want to make sure you're trying to limit sodium or high sodium foods. Trying to keep your sodium level at 350 milligrams or less per meal, and that includes 220 milligrams or less per side item or snack food. We don't stress this a whole lot in our program. However, it is important to keep your sodium levels on the lower side. The reason for this is for high blood pressure and cardiac reasons. Therefore, if your doctor has you on a low sodium diet, please follow the recommendations that they are providing for you. The next thing we'll talk about on the food label is the carbohydrates. The carbohydrates are listed in bold, as are the fats. You can also see, just as we looked at with the fats, the indentation underneath that bold lettering of where it says total carbohydrate, the dietary fibers 
and the sugars are indented, indicating that they are all a part of the total carbohydrate content. While looking at this food label, you can see that there are 37 grams of total carbohydrate in this food. Four of those grams are coming from the fiber and 10 of them, or 12 of them, are coming from the total sugar content. Of that sugar, this food includes 10 added sugars. Therefore, the 12 and the 4 together gives us 16 grams of carbohydrate and then the additional outstanding grams are usually found in the actual wheat or grain that is used to make that product. With that being said, we try to break down carbohydrates into 15 gram increments. Those 15 grams are considered a serving of carbohydrate. If I were to break down the 37 grams of carbohydrate into the number of carbohydrate servings for this food, I would see that 37 grams divided by the 15 grams equaling a carbohydrate serving will give me two carbohydrate choices. This is something that may have been stressed to you if you have diabetes when talking about carbohydrate choices. Therefore, anytime you see a total carbohydrate content, you should divide the total number by 15 to show you how many carbohydrate choices you'd be getting in that food. If you were to have eaten the entire package, again, eight servings or eight two third cup servings, you would have 296 grams of carbohydrate consumed. At that point, dividing that by 15 would give you 20 carbohydrate choices for that one consumption of food. A part of the carbohydrate is the dietary fiber. Dietary fibers are very beneficial. There are many benefits to fiber. Therefore, if you are going to be eating a carbohydrate type of food, it's highly recommended that you have ones that have a good source of fiber in them. We need to choose more foods with fiber because number one, they help us to feel more full. They help to lower cholesterol levels. They help you with your GI tract and any constipation problems. They also help to lower your cholesterol and prevent certain types of cancer. As you can see, fiber foods are very beneficial. Our daily goal is about 25 to 35 grams of fiber per day, depending on if you're a male or a female. When choosing foods with fiber, you want to choose foods that have at least three to five grams of fiber per serving to get you to that daily goal of 25 to 35 grams per day. The foods that have the most amount of fibers are typically your fruits and your vegetables, your beans and your legumes, and your whole grain breads and grains. Fruits that have seeds or you're eating the skins and the seeds such as berries, have the most fiber in them. They're the types of fruits and fiber-containing foods that we should try to consume to reach our daily goal. Next, we're gonna talk about the added sugars or sugar that is in the foods that we're eating. Again, sugar is indented, as you can see right here, underneath the total carbohydrate, so it is still a part of the total carbohydrate. There are two different labels I have here. The one on the left indicates that it is a one cup serving and has about four servings per that container. This one on the right is a one container serving as well. Both of these food labels are for yogurt. The major difference that we want to see here is the fact that 
the food label on the left has nine grams of sugar, which would be perfect for following the guidelines of single digit sugars in our weight management program. It also has 23 grams of fiber, uh, I'm sorry, 23 grams of protein. The next food label has 24 grams of sugar and only six grams of protein. You can see the differences in these two yogurts. The yogurt on the left indicates that it is a plain yogurt and the yogurt on the right is obviously fruit flavored. In the ingredient list of the fruit flavored yogurt, you will find high fructose corn syrup, you will find pectin, and you will also find apples. Of those, they are all added sugar ingredients, some of which are listed on the columns on your right hand side. What we try to do is have the yogurt that does not have the high fructose corn syrup or the added fruit. What you would like, what we would like you to do is to add some of your own fruit if you prefer to have it sweetened somewhat. They can also be fruit flavored yogurts, but not necessarily fruit added in. The next part of the food label that we'd like that I want to discuss with you is one of the important parts that we always talk about. We try to stress the importance of protein. Protein highlighted here in orange indicates that this one two third cup serving size contains three grams of protein. One ounce of protein gives us approximately seven grams of protein. Do you know what your protein goal is for the day? If you're a man, it is 70 to 80 grams of protein. And for females, it is 60 to 70 grams of protein. We encourage three meals a day. Therefore, your protein goal for each meal is what? 20 grams of protein, there or about, is what is ideal to have that total goal of protein spread out throughout the day. Therefore, about 20 grams of protein each meal would give you 60 grams of protein, and then snacking, if needed, in between meals would tack on additional protein content. Usually your evening meal has a larger meat source or protein source, which would then constitute a heavier protein intake for that meal, helping you to reach your daily goal. Your protein goal for snacks is about 10 grams of protein. The FDA has an interactive nutrition label, which is excellent for additional explanation as to what the food labels are trying to tell us. There is a link in the video description below on our YouTube channel. If you click on that link, you can access this FDA interactive nutrition facts label. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact any of us dietitians at any time either by email or on our direct line. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.